Joining me now, a RNC National Committee man, former chairman of the Republican Lawyers Association, Randy Evans. Randy, good to have you with us. Attorney Barbara Welcome. Smith, she served as a law clerk to Justice Samuel Alito. And uh, it's great to have you with us, Barbara. Your reaction to the Thank speech, you. it's first what he didn't say. He didn't deal with the hearings today on Capitol Hill, did he? No, not at all. But I, I think the average person in, in, in Washington has to be wondering what they just saw. Yeah. And what, what do you think they just saw? They have no idea. They don't understand it. What they actually saw was the American people saying, can you hear me now? Uh, we have a president who's actually going to do what he promised to do. He's doing it day in and day out. He's only been in a little more than 50 days, and already he's dramatically changed the entire trajectory of the country, whether it be in terms of immigration, cutting immigration on the southern border by such significant percentages, to the growth of the economy, to literally changing Obamacare and getting rid of it, starting with a vote next Thursday. Barbara, as Randy suggests, President Trump's accomplishments are very real, they're measurable, uh, and they are surprising, uh, even if you're uh, one of his uh, most uh, uh, frenetic uh, supporters, like many in the crowd there in Louisville. I, I mean, it's mm -hmm. an impressive beginning to any administration uh, in this country's history. It's, it certainly is, Lou, and I think some of the biggest applause lines that I heard, although I'll admit I was listening for them, uh, were when he mentioned Judge Gorsuch's confirmation. I think right. a lot of people voted for President Trump precisely so that he would fill not just this seat on the Supreme Court, but possibly one or two other swing or left-leaning seats in the future. Um, and when he talked about the status of the immigration orders in the Fourth Circuit and the Ninth Circuit, I mean, those are issues that are pending in the federal courts or pending you know, before the Judiciary Committee that people really care about. And, and he made it clear, uh, Randy, that he just... You know, he it just he is very frustrated with the court system right now. Uh, by the way, uh, most people I talk with, uh, attorneys like yourselves, uh, you know, people, members of the public, uh, it is a very frustrating time because e even laymen like me can understand that if you're going to be a judge, you have to apply the law to the case. And two federal judges, well, actually three, uh, did not do that. Uh, that's very frustrating, and it's also, frankly, uh, a, a cautionary uh, tale uh, for, for America right now uh, when we have a judicial system that's basically out of control. Well, it also tells you something when you have to go all the way to the state of Hawaii in order to find a different judge than the, mm -hmm. the, the judge of the state of Washington because you want a judge shop to get the ruling you wanted, even though the new immigration order was tailored to specifically address all of the concerns raised by the Ninth Circuit. At the end of the day, this is going to be embarrassing, Lou. I'm just telling you, when this makes its way to the Supreme Court and they see the degree to which this particular order was so carefully tailored, and the degree to which you had a sitting federal judge who's not been briefed on any classified information on any security threat decide to supplant his view for that of the president, it'll be embarrassing. And 40-plus pages ready to go. Uh, judge Derek Watson also not only appointed by President Obama, but for crying out loud, uh, and he was not only a classmate of President Obama at Harvard Law School, the president just happened to be in Honolulu, Barbara. Uh, the very day that uh, Judge Watson was putting down that uh, remarkable ruling. I, you're right, Lou, and I think that when you compare some of the district court orders we've seen in recent days to someone like George, Judge Gorsuch and the things that he said in the course of his nomination and confirmation, the difference just couldn't be starker. I mean, Judge Gorsuch talks often about things like judicial humility and about being aware of his own imperfections and about being a faithful servant of the law and the Constitution. I mean, my gosh, I wish we had more of that at all levels of the federal court. Indeed, and let's turn to the, you know, the other part of the story today, and it's a big part, and that is to have the, the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation sitting next to the head of the NSA, that is Admiral Mike Rogers, uh, basically just sort of talking their way through the day, but trying to say as little as possible. Uh, it, it is really stunning to hear the FBI director say, you know, he'll investigate some things, but for example, leaks, which he says he takes very seriously, it was pretty doggone clear when he didn't even know the number of people who would be available to, uh, would have access to that information to leak it. 
uh, that he doesn't even have an investigation underway in all likelihood. What do you think, Randy? Well, I just find it hard to take him seriously at this point. I mean, here's a guy who starts with, I can't confirm there's an investigation, but let me confirm that there's an investigation. I can't correct false statements that are made in the media, but let me respond to the president's tweet. And then he gets asked about, well, what about the other leakers? And he goes, oh, no, it's our policy not to respond or correct false uh, statements that are made by leakers who don't know what they're talking about. But by the way, let me respond to this particular thing from the White House. I mean, it, it's really, there comes a point where it becomes more about Comey than about what's actually the law and what should be they be looking at, which are people who are endangering American citizens by leaking classified information and unmasking people's names so that they're subject to all kinds of yeah. things like General Flynn was. Uh, absolutely. Barbara, your thoughts? I, I wish we could keep the March Madness on the basketball court and out of the U.S. Congress, but it doesn't seem like that's what's happening these days. No, it, it does not. And uh, as we also examine uh, Judge Gorsuch uh, and Senator Blumenthal and Senator Schumer, uh, who are turning out to be the most, uh, uh, I mean, their politics is rancid. Uh, to say, as, uh, uh, as Senator Blumenthal did, He's going to use every tool at his disposal to stop a man who just about everyone I've heard from says is a remarkable jurist, a, a great and decent American, uh, yet he's charging away. Is there not a political price to be paid for this, Randy? Yeah, I think there will be. I think what happened was the Senate caucus got together and they decided to designate Senator Blumenthal as the attack dog. And I think he'll be joined by many of his other colleagues on the uh, Judiciary Committee. They'll try their best to find a chink in the armor. I don't think it exists. I think you've probably got one of the finest, if not the finest, nominees in the history of the country. He's going to sail through. He's going to do well. I think at the end they'll back down so that they avoid the risk that the nuclear option gets played. They want to save it for the summer.